uh, in my previous lecture i introduced the concept called uh, turing machine as we see several uh, sophisticated or more complicated languages than uh, regular or contextual languages for that purpose we have introduced and at that point of time i have also mentioned that this has both the features of you know language acceptor as well as uh, the features of uh, uh, moore and milley type of machine giving output also first let me recollect what we have discussed in the previous class i have introduced turing machine as a quadruple that is i have written q sigma delta q not where q is a finite set sigma is a finite set delta transition map and q not the initial state of this machine and q set of states in which h is not part of that the halting state that we are using and uh, we take this special symbol to use blank that is an element of sigma and we have taken this a total function a transition map that is from q cross sigma given any state and a symbol we assign so called the next state can be the halting state also and that is either you print a symbol or you move to left or right this is how we have defined and q not is an element of q called the initial state this is how i have introduced the notion of turing machine as a quadruple and uh, i have introduced the concept of computation there like in case of other automata so one step relation is introduced and uh, that is through each transition if you apply a transition on uh, and a state and a symbol in a particular configuration so this one step relation and configurations are introduced if i write c the set of configurations of a turing machine m i have discussed about this one step relation as usual a binary relation on the c and then we talked about reflexive transitive closure of that and uh, given a turing machine m the language accepted by a turing machine m is set of all those strings x in sigma not star such that if you give in this format infinitely many step you are getting a halting configuration that uh, say y a z this is how we have discussed where sigma not is sigma minus blank the blank symbol and i have constructed so some turing machines to accept a uh, particular language we have discussed you know, how to construct those turing machines and all that and i gave some of some languages some popular languages known to you earlier to construct a turing machine now we will introduce the concept uh, of giving output also by the turing machine here i only thing is i fix some convention under what conditions we say for a particular input x the output is y so that kind of convention i have to introduce again i give the input as earlier on the left justified right side infinite tape we have this is the turing machine i let me call it as the standard turing machine under discussion i give the input as earlier say x is given as input and uh, on the right side this blank 
the reading and writing head we keep this is the instantaneous description or configuration we call this is how we start and after finitely many steps we will whatever the output that you are expecting y we should leave with this format and again the reading and writing head is here. By fixing this convention we get certain advantages that we will discuss and you will realize after uh, you know uh, one or two lectures that why we are fixing this kind of convention. Because we see a lot of variance in the literature the various uh, books when you are looking at you can see that if you are expecting y as output you may uh, print y in place of x itself because by arising x or whatever ultimately on the tape if you are left with y then you are happy. So, it is just a convention that the output how do you expect on the tape because unlike in case of millimission that we have discussed there you have a separate tape for output and given an input on the input tape the output is anyway shown up the required output is shown up on the output tape. Here both input and output we have one for, uh, for both of them we have only one tape. Thus, we can have certain convention to report the output. Here for my lectures I fix this convention that the input will be given as usual that we are giving uh, in case of language acceptance, but the output I expect again in the format that first cell should be blank and what are the output expected that should be printed say y and then on the right blank I will be halting with the halting state. So, in the beginning you are with the initial state say q naught and uh, you are when you are halting you will be halting with the halting state like this. So, this is how we expect the output. Now, let me formally give this definition let f from sigma 1 star to sigma 2 star a function where sigma 1 and sigma 2 2 alpha bad are not containing the special symbol blank. You take a function we say a Turing mission say m q sigma delta q naught is said to compute the function f if these two alphabets sigma 1 sigma 2 are subsets of sigma and for any x in sigma 1 star and y in sigma 2 star, if y is image of x under f then give x as input and you expect y as output as per our convention and conversely that is with the initial configuration. So, if you start with something and by the time it halts and by the time it halts by leaving some output y then that uh, that has to be image under the function f that is the meaning if and only if. Look here that uh, x is if y is image of x under f then y has to come as output and whatever the output for any string you are getting that has to be the image. So, that is why we are writing if and only if. So, under these conditions we say the function f is, uh, is computed 
by the Turing machine m. Now, a function f sigma 1 star to sigma 2 star is said to be Turing computable or simply computable computable if there is a Turing machine that computes f. So, this is another definition. So, when do we say a, to a function is computable? Now, we have mentioned when we say a Turing machine computes f. So, this definition we have now. So, to compute a function we have to construct a Turing machine with this convention. Then that particular function we may call it as a computable function or more precisely Turing computable function because we are constructing a Turing machine to compute that function. So, this is another notion that uh, I talk about other than the language acceptance with respect to Turing machines. And let me just point out that the languages that are accepted by Turing machines a Turing acceptable language I may say or I may also call one, uh, one may say that is recursively enumerable languages. So, let me just point out this a Turing acceptable language is also called also called as recursively enumerable language. Now, we see that we construct Turing machines as of now for two purposes one Turing acceptable languages or recursively enumerable languages or for Turing computable functions. Now, let me continue with few more examples. So, that you, you can get familiar with the notion of Turing machine or the constructing Turing machine for certain purpose. So, let me just take this your homework example that is a power n b power n such that n greater than equal to 0. This I have asked you to construct a Turing machine. What type of checking that we conduct? the Turing machine, because in for this language when we have constructed push down automaton, you are reading of course, there from left to right, because there is nothing like uh, moving left and right. We have only one direction moving that is with the usual convention that moving from left to right side. As long as you are getting yes, you are putting yes into stack that, ho that is how we are remembering and uh, once you start getting b's you are matching with the number of years that are already in the stack. If they are matching then you are accepting otherwise you are rejecting there uh, in case of push down automaton. Here we do not have any other uh, uh, memory device memory uh, place here like stack. Here we have we, we can go back and forth on the tape and that is how we will actually do the matching as you see that if a power n b power n so certain number of years followed by certain number of b's are given you simply go back and forth and keep matching with uh, the symbols and because there is nothing like counting and remembering. Here the things are given it is something like you just match them and understand whether uh, it is of the form a power n b power n or not. So, if the x is some x is given as input the first cell anyway as usual blank if x is given as input that means say for example, certain number of years and followed by certain number of b's the, that is the required uh, thing to be accepted and the reading at writing at is here. You start with the initial state say for example, q naught and you take a left move just 
if this is empty string that should be accepted because when n equal to 0 a power n b power n this string is epsilon that is the empty string then it should be accepted. So, just to distinguish this blank, this blank and this blank I will change the state. So, when I go to left side if I get the blank in the beginning or in the beginning then I will simply accept it. When you get a b that is when the process starts. If you get a clearly the string is not of the form a power n b power n therefore, you can uh, put it in infinite loop or you can make it uh, you can make the machine hang. So, this first checking condition will be if I get to b what I have to do that I have to pursue I may do this I will make blank cell here I will go till this end and cross check take a right move and cross check whether corresponding to this b whether there is an a. If there is an a then I will mark it may be I will make it blank then I will go to right till the blank then I will take a left move and see whether there is a blank and uh, if there is blank then corresponding to this a. So, there is only a b as input if there is another b then I continue this process as earlier if there is an a again the input is not in the required form to accept. So, that is how this loop I can continue and uh, eventually if it is in the required form I have to accept in the halting state. So, let me just give you the transition map with this logic. Let me start with the symbols of course, we are allowed to take more and more symbols in sigma. So, let me start with in the initial state I am reading blank I will take a left move by changing the state to q 1 q 1 indicates that I have started reading the input. If that is blank then we can simply accept. So, halt by say let me print there itself blank and halt you can do whatever you can go to you can take a right move and halt but you should ensure that you should not take a left move here. So, if you take a left move it, it hangs. So, I put it in halting state make it blank and there is another possibility that you may get a b a positively I mean. So, in which case I understand that by changing state say q 2 and I will make it blank. So, when I am in q 2 when I am in q 2 I know that I am reading blank. So, I am not going to read any a or b. So, this is the cell I require some information. So, I will change say for example, to q 3 and take a left move. So, that means, I have just marked b and I have to go till left end and I have to see whether there is an a in the at the, at the end of at the in the beginning. So, this q 3 is indicating that I have just mark b and I am going to cross check whether there is an a. So, in q 3 I continue till the left end. So, that will be recognized by blank. So, if I get a's or b's in between on the way I will keep going to left. So, that is q 3 left even if I get b in q 3 I can continue. If I am getting blank now I recognize that is how this blank is required. If there is no such special marking here on the tape we will go and hang because what to cross check because the input is if it is in the from the beginning. So, that is how I hope now you understand that why we require some special symbol in the beginning when I am going when I am when I start reading the input from right and going to left. So, we require a special symbol in the beginning of the tape that is how we, we have introduced this. So, once you receive blank then I can take a right move and uh, let me indicate that by changing a state say q 3 say let me go to q 4 and take a right move. In q 4 what is expected in q 4 we expect that there has to be a. So, I will look for that positively suppose there is an a then I will change the state to q 5 and print and uh, mark it that. So, we erase that by printing blank there. So, in q 5 of course, I know that I will be reading the blank only because just we have printed blank. So, let me change the state to say for example, q 6 and move to right and in q 6 
Now, I have to go all the way till the end till right end. So, if I get A's or B's, I will continue on the tape by continuing the same state say Q 6 R till I, re I reach to the blank. Once I reach to the right end the blank, you know that in the beginning when I am in the initial state Q naught, I take a left move by moving to the state Q 1. So, here the same thing we can do so that it will continue to the loop. So, I will change to Q 1 and take a left move. Again now you see if there is another B and corresponding to which if there is another A in the beginning of the tape as per this whatever we have defined in Q 1 you are reading B change to the state Q 2 and in Q 2 you are reading blank we know because we have just a printed blank no other symbol is possible. So, Q 3 you know, we are changing to the state Q 3 and moving to left and in Q 3 you keep continuing to uh, left and uh, uh, till you reach blank because in the beginning we have the first year we have arrays. So, there is there is a blank there. So, till that point it will go and uh, take a right move there and positively we are expecting an A there. So, in which case we are changing the state to Q 5 and in Q 5 of course, since we have printed just blank we are reading blank. So, that change to, to the state Q 6 and in Q 6 you can continue till right end. So, you, this loop continues if you have say for example, 3 A's and 3 B's the loop will continue for 3 times. If you have say for example, 4 A's followed by 4 B's the loop continues for 4 times and so on. Now, let us look at other uh, part. Now, for example, in the beginning here if you get A. So, this is the cell that we have to look at. In this case we put say for example, in Q 7 and ask to move to right because this is not desired in the state Q 1 I am not expecting to read A for the desired in for the desired uh, uh, string in, in the language. So, I will put it in the state say for example, Q 7 and in Q 7 what I will do I will keep moving to right. So, that the machine goes to that the infinite onto the uh, it will run on in the infinite tape. So, I will continue in Q 7 and keep going to right. So, Q 7 keep going to right, Q 7 keep going to right. So, this takes the mission to the infinite tape and it never halts because there are you know that is the right side infinite tape. So, in Q 1 I am not expecting to root A. So, if I am reaching that then this is what we are doing. In Q 2 we have printed blank and therefore, in Q 2 A and B you would not get at all. So, you, you since delta is a total function we have to define it as a total function because for every state and the input symbol we have to give definition. So, you give something arbitrarily let me use the symbol A to say that arbitrarily we define let me let me give something later this thing. Similarly, in the initial state as per our convention we start with the blanks cell that is on the right side of the input. So, A and B are also not expected because we are not continuing in Q naught. Once you come on to the input I am changing the state to Q 1. So, these two are arbitrarily I will define something. Now, look at uh, in case of this Q 4. So, what is the meaning of Q 4 that I reach to the left end and uh, took a right turn. If I re if I get A then I am ok. If I get B then this is a mismatch for the pattern. So, now I can put it in Q 7 and ask it to go to right. Similarly, I have if I have consumed a B if I have noted a B corresponding to that if there is no A if there is only blank then also I will put it in the infinite loop. This is how I can do. And in Q 5, Q 5 means currently I am reading blank uh, I have just uh, by when you are changing to the state Q 5 we have printed blank there. So, we will be reading blank only we are not going to get A or B or any other symbol. So, these two places again you can define anything arbitrarily. So, for this A something since we have to give some state component you let me put say Q naught and something may be asking it to go to write or whatever because this situation would not arise wherever the cell I have written A that situation would not arise, but since 
by definition delta is a total function for every state and a symbol I should have some definition. So, let me say define with this state component q naught and something I have to define I am just saying r. So, this is how I declare and uh, with this definition if you set the Turing machine now the state set is so where a is this now set q to be the states q naught to I have till q 7 sigma is a b blank delta as defined here if you consider m this q sigma delta is defined here and q naught is a Turing machine such that the language accepted by m is the one we have asked. What do you do? You just do some computations on it and realize that this precisely accepts this language. Let me just do some computations and uh, observe this. So, in the initial state if you are given say a a b b this is the initial configuration as per our definition it will go to q 1 blank a a b b and in the next step it will print blank at that place a a b this is this is the situation and uh, in q 2 of course, I read blank then I change to q 3 and go to left and in q 3 I keep moving to this till left end of course, here one step I come on to this a and the next step next a and come on blank. So, in three steps I will be let me indicate that in three steps I will get this kind of this configuration and when I have blank in q 3 I will change it to q 4 and go to right. So, now the state is q 4 and I make a right move. So, this is the configuration and in q 4 if I am getting a I will change it to q 5 and make it blank q 5 and uh, this is made blank that is the situation and in q 5 of course, I will be reading blank. So, I change it to q 6 and go to right q 6 and we go to right that means, the current cell is this and in q 6 I continue to move to right that is how it is defined. So, q 6 while well reading a or b we move to right. So, this is blank blank a b this is one one step in another step also we will move that is q 6 blank blank a b now I go to this. So, I will get blank here. Now, in q 6 when I receive blank then I will change to q 1 and go to left that is the idea here. So, I will come to q 1 and uh, take a left move. Now, as earlier when I read blank it will print uh, when I read b it will print blank there change it to q 2 and in q 2 I am reading blank I will change it to I um, will change it to q 3 and keep moving to left till I go to this blank. So, here let me just after finitely many steps of course, here making here it is blank that is 1 and in q 3 I will continue to this position and at this blank uh, this indicates that I have reached to this I do not have b now because we made it blank there. Now, in q 3 again I take a right move by changing to q 4 changing to q 4 
and now the current situation is this. In Q 4 when I am reading A we convert it to blank. So, that is Q 5 is the situation. Now, in Q 5 I am reading blank it will change to Q 6 and take a right move in Q 6 it will take a right move. So, you get this configuration and in Q 6 you take when you are getting blank it, it will take a left move. So, that is now Q 1 blank 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 this is the because in Q 6 when I am reading blank the configuration the, the definition is will change to the state Q 1 and take a left move this is the transition. So, by applying the transition I get this in Q 1 when I have blank then it halts by printing blank there. So, now in the next step we go to halting state by printing blank in the third cell of course, this is the final configuration. So, with this computation you see that A A B B is accepted and if you consider A A A B B B say A cube B cube then the same thing you can see that this will continue this loop will continue and finally, you will come to the halting state. For example, if there is a string ending with A you as per the definition here in Q 1 if you are getting A I am going to Q 7 then thus it will go to the, the infinite loop of going to write keep going to write on the infinite tape or for example, you have a B, but corresponding to which if there is no A I will come to the situation that in Q 4 I am cross checking whether there is A otherwise I am putting in this I am uh, we are given defining this transition that is Q 7 R and thus it is going to again on the right uh, on the infinite tape it keep uh, uh, it will move on the infinite tape. So, the string will not be accepted and what are all the other patterns which is not of the form a power n b power n because this is a total function here what we have defined delta is a total function. So, you give any situation of the input we have defined something here and you see what are the possibilities that we have defined and through which we can argue that because there are only finitely many transitions and the transitions are having a certain pattern because we have followed certain logic. So, you can apply the pattern and prove that this transition will give uh, will uh, this transition will accept the language a power n b power n and greater than equal to 0. So, you look at the pattern of input and argue on and we can of course, prove that this language accepted with this Turing machine is precisely L. So, now you can of course, do this kind of computation just to realize that if some other string is given as input what is happening. Now, as I have introduced the notion of Turing computable function, let me now give you a function and uh, construct a Turing machine computes that particular function. A simple function here that is let me take f 1 from a b star to I will call it as again a b star such that f 1 of any x is equal to x the identity function so called. So, whatever is the input that you give you have to get the same output. So, here in this case so the input is expected this way as I have mentioned, but originally it is in q naught and what I have to give after finitely many steps. I should leave this with the halting state. You can quickly guess what sort of machine should be that and what type of transitions that we have to define there. Very simple 
you take one initial state and then immediately you halt it because the water is the input you want to leave the same as output. So, here I need not do any anything here and uh, we can pursue the job very quickly. So, the Turing machine very quickly one can easily say that because the alphabet is this. So, the transition with one state I can give and uh, you define anything arbitrarily. So, I have only one state. So, I can uh, as I can whatever that you are reading of course, I will read blank. So, there I have to halt we know, but I should not take here the chance of moving uh, I have to print blank here because so that the reading and writing are there only. Here also let me just say anything arbitrarily you define here that does not matter because we are not going to encounter in the initial state q naught a or b we are not moving the head. So, this transitions this the uh, Turing machine with this transitions precisely computes this function as you understand quickly from the transitions defined here. It is a very trivial Turing computable function you see. Okay. Let me now give this little non trivial, but of course, you realize that this is also a trivial function for you. A b star to let me say for the sake a b star only. And now, f 2 I define for all x I will send it to the empty string. So, here what we have to do whatever is on the tape we have to erase it and leave the tape because the epsilon when we are putting this as input for example, the obviously the format is as per our convention the first cell is blank and here I have to put x and then on the right side of that particular input I have to be there. So, epsilon will be indicated by this this is what is epsilon on the tape will be indicated by this as input of course, of course, as output here we have to see. So, that means, if you start with the tape of this format starting here say initial state q naught after finitely many steps we will come to the halting state by having you know having this as output this configuration. How do we define this? We just take a left move as long as you are getting a s or b's keep erasing it once you get a blank you just take a right move and simply halt this is the logic uh, I define it here. So, the delta transition function of the Turing machine I am going to construct take say in q naught just to distinguish that I have started the process. So, I will change it to q 1 and take a left move and in q 1 if I get a say I will go to q 2 make it blank or even if I get b I will go to q 2 make it blank in q 2 of course, I am reading blank. So, I will change it to q 1 and take a left move or I can of course, write inst instead of writing here the transitions q 2 I can say q naught it does not matter we can reduce the number of states there. I am not worried about how many states that I am using at this point of time. So, I will simply say that I am changing to the state q 2 and in q 2 I am reading blank. So, it will again uh, to pursue this job I will change it to q 1 and take a left move in q 1 when I get again a it changes to q 2 and print blank and b prints blank. In q 1 if I am reaching to this state I mean in this situation having blank then I take a right move and halt. So, that I have erased everything in q 2 since I am reading blank I have only this possibility and similarly in the beginning I do not have I do not have to read any non empty uh, cell only blank cell. So, here here arbitrarily you define anything because we have to define something as delta is a total function in the definition say here a can be something. So, with this transition function what are the Turing machine I construct because the states are clear there are three states symbols are there and the delta I have defined declare q naught as initial state. Now, this Turing machine clearly pursues the job that uh, as desired to show that 
the function f 2 is a Turing computable function. This machine simply erases the tape and leaves the blank tape, not blank tape essentially the uh, as epsilon s output. So, these are a little uh, understandable very quickly and a little trivial. One more for the sake of understanding this, let me consider for the, for the change of the situation. So, let me use 0 1 star and what do I do? f 3 of x is y, where y is obtained from x by replacing 0 in place of in place of say a and 1 in place of b. Wherever you have b, you place it with 1, wherever you have a, you place it with 0. I hope it is very simple uh, phenomena and you can understand this function, how this is defined. For epsilon, the, out, uh, the image is epsilon. So, what essentially you have to do? You keep going to left as long as you are getting a, whenever you get a, you print it print 0 there, when you are getting 1 you print you print uh, one, uh, sorry whenever you are getting uh, b you print 1 there till you go to the end of the tape left hand uh, that is indicated by blank. Then you take a right move and keep going to right move till uh, reaching to the end. So, let us take this as an exercise and realize that this is a Turing computable function. Now, the point is you look here some of this because so far we I have handled just very simple examples either Turing computable function or Turing acceptable languages. In just in case of a power and b power and itself I have used about 7 states and any other language now you can try for all those palindromes you can in a similar way you can try or I have asked to uh, construct a Turing machine to accept the language say a power and b power and c power and greater than equal to 0. So, you require one more sort of check, it is not just reading after uh, b we have checked for a, if it is a power and b power and c power n then you have to see that corresponding to each symbol whether there is in this uh, respective pattern or not those things we have to uh, cross check. And as long as the symbols are increasing or the checks the loop whatever that we define we are choosing certain new states and that is how we are creating the memory. And for simple examples, for simple examples we see that you here you will require several states. Sometimes you know for very simple examples that we have already constructed for regular languages or contextual language type of uh, things themselves. You may have to require some 20 states, 30 states like that. And the transition function you know looks very complicated because you have to go through carefully the transitions are carefully defined and the places and everything. Now, if you look at some sophisticated more complicated uh, uh, languages or computable functions the type of Turing machine that you would go you are going to construct uh, will be more and more cumbersome to see. You would construct and you may verify you can always uh, uh, prove that whatever the transition function that you have constructed does the job the desired uh, job, but the point is if there are for example, multiplication addition and this kind of things you know you can do it using computer. So, this as we have mentioned that this Turing machine is essentially taking care of the things that you can handle using uh, usual computer. There are several things that you see that you can do it using your usual computer. So, for sub certain simple phenomena if you have to require say for example, 100 states, 200 states and 1 lakh or of that order, then it will be very difficult to uh, really write and see. So, in this direction I will introduce a shorthand uh, a notation short notation while constructing a Turing machine we will follow that notation and 
try to decrease this complexity of in seeing or in understanding the uh, construction of that particular Turing machine. First in the direction, first let us first realize what are the basic Turing machines possible and uh, first and what are the Turing machines that we construct and those Turing machines we further use to construct some of the complicated machines wherever it is required. So, this is the logic that we follow to construct uh, the to introduce this uh, notation a shorthand for constructing a Turing machine. In the direction first we realize what are the basic Turing machines and some of the basic Turing machines which you may quite often you, uh, you use I may give some fixed symbols for that and those symbols whenever you recall we assume that okay, this Turing machine that you have already constructed and now I can make use of that. Like in your programming you would have written certain modules certain procedures in a bigger program and uh, whenever you require you can of course call it and continue with this. But only thing is here we have to take care that whenever you are connecting to a particular Turing machine the pattern of the input is essentially as required to the machine that you have constructed earlier and whatever that the output that you are getting or whatever it, if it is accepting or whatever. So, the time it is actually halting where we are actually leaving the uh, tape that is very important and now I can make this point clear that why we have to follow a fixed convention here because starting here and ending here. Uh, that kind of convention what we are following. So, that in this particular cause for this particular cause this is uh, this convention is very useful. Now, let me start with looking at basic Turing machines and then we will try to see that how to construct certain complicated uh, Turing machines with using this easy notation. One can quickly realize that uh, Turing machine the basic operations it is doing is it is moving of course, it is reading and writing head moving to a cell left from the current cell from the current cell or it is moving to a cell right from the current cell or in the current cell on the tape it would print some symbol these are the three possible transitions current cell it prints a symbol. So, these are the three things the basic things that a Turing machine is doing. Now, if I want a Turing machine wherever it is currently it has to just move one cell left and halt. Let me call the Turing machine with this L, this is the name of the Turing machine and similarly, if I write R this is the Turing machine that takes a right move from the current cell and halts and for all A in sigma I write P A. the Turing machine that prints A in the current cell and halts. Defining these Turing machines is very easy, it is not a big deal because for L you can construct a Turing machine like this, this transition. So, let me call it as delta L. What are the input symbols? Let me A 1, A 2, A n say what are all the symbols that you have? I take one state say initial the initial state q naught wherever I am I will just halt by taking a left move that is how you can define and so on. So, that is the transition function delta L is defined such a way that this q naught at any symbol A this is halt by taking a left move for all A in sigma. This is the Turing machine. Similarly, one can look for delta r that you can define take one state that is the initial state for all symbols you define it as halt by taking a right move for all a in sigma. 
And now, if I write here delta A here, I take one state that is the initial state. What are the symbol currently I am reading? Let me use now say B, a variable here. I halt by printing A in the current cell for all B in sigma. So, if you define things like this, these Turing machines precisely they do whatever that is required as mentioned here. The Turing machine L, whatever it is the current cell from which it will take one left move and halts and the Turing machine R that takes a right move and halts from the current cell. P A the Turing machine which prints A in the current cell and simply halts whatever it is reading in the current cell. So, these are the basic operations that these are the basic type of transitions that we are realizing in a Turing machine. So, these things are now I have used L R P A for this basic Turing machines. So, using this basic Turing machines how to construct certain complicated Turing machines and what is the formal way of constructing the everything that we will discuss in the next class. Now, since we have discussed how uh, what is the Turing acceptable language, what is the Turing computable function, how to construct a Turing machine using the state phenomena you construct certain Turing machines and see that how many states actually you are requiring and all those things. So, let me give certain uh, problems. So, f from say a b star to a b star you define by say f of x is equal to x power or reversal of the string and prove that this is Turing computable. Turing computable functions. So, we, we see this. Or let me take say G, see A B star, for example, 0 1 star. G of x take any string that um, you create. Okay, let me put say a b star only. It is like x say x power r. H A B star to A B star X X. Of course, I will give few more examples, and uh, these are the very simple in this lineup. And you see that these are for these simple examples, how many states that you are requiring and uh, how the notion of giving a short notation to construct a Turing machine is useful that you will realize. So, construct Turing machines to show that these functions are Turing computable and uh, such and similar functions that you can take and uh, construct Turing machines. We will discuss construct uh, giving sh short notation in the next class.